Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar which is being hosted by our national chapter in Lebanon on the topic of strategies in media and social media for substance use prevention. Our national chapters make a unique contribution to ITIP's mission at the national level and ITIP Lebanon is certainly no exception. The national chapter is hosted by Mentor Arabia, the leading non-governmental organisation who promote healthy lifestyles amongst youth. Whilst we are waiting for a few more to join us, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Kirsty Fitzpatrick, a National Chapters Coordinator at ISUP, and I will begin by saying a little bit about us. ISUP is a membership organisation for the global substance use workforce, and we have over 35,000 members worldwide. We are an international network that unites, connects, and shares knowledge across the substance use prevention, harm reduction, treatment and recovery support workforce. Our global mission is to make the work of our members as impactful, accessible and effective as possible. We do this by making it easier to discover and share evidence-based knowledge, best practice, training and networking opportunities. If you've not done so already, please head over to our website, isup.net, where you will find information on how to sign up for free membership our website also has a wealth of resources for you to enjoy. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few things so you know how to participate in today's event. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to our presenter by typing your questions into the questions pane of the webinar interface on your screen. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation, so please, I encourage you to do so, and we will collect these and address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. A recording of the webinar will also be made available, available for you to watch on demand after the event. And I hope you will stay with us for what promises to be a popular and topical webinar. Now I'm delighted to tell you a little, more, little bit more about today's webinar and introduce you to our speaker. This webinar aims to provide an overview of how media influences behaviour and its importance in prevention efforts. The webinar will also cover a discussion on the, top, on the types of media commonly used in prevention campaigns. Our presenter today is Bashara Gawi, Head of Communications and Fundraising and Deputy CEO at Mentor Arabia. Bashara holds a BSc in Biology and an MSc in Nutrition from the Lebanese University, and he has more than 13 years experience in the Arab region in the health education field. He has participated in the production of publications and books about healthy lifestyles and has actively organised exhibitions, marketing events and advertising campaigns. Shara has worked in strategic planning, team building, partnership development, fundraising, advocacy and youth mentoring. Throughout his career, he has worked with leading figures and experts in the, experts in the field of human and social development. He is a strong supporter of youth empowerment who believes in the value of addressing social and humanitarian issues. So now it's time to hand over to Bashara. So it's over to you. Thank you. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Kirsty, uh, for the introduction. I'm very glad and honored, in fact, uh, to be with you today on this uh, webinar. Hopefully it will be interesting for our audience. So thank you, Esab, for uh, uh, this opportunity and thank you again for uh, the introduction. Yes, as you mentioned, my name is Chara Gawi. I'm uh, the deputy CEO and the head of communication at Panther Arabia, which is a regional organization based in Beirut, but that caters to uh, the whole uh, Arab region to empower uh, children and youth to prevent them from risky behaviors. It's uh, the regional branch of Mantra International that was founded like 30 years ago uh, by Her Majesty Queen Sylvia of Sweden and has multiple branches uh, around uh, uh, the world from the USA to European branches and to the uh, Arab region. I will try as much as possible to give uh, from my personal expertise in uh, uh, the field of uh, prevention, be it uh, communication and uh, advertising and also uh, campaigning. Uh, we'll start by uh, outlining the, what we will be uh, talking about today in the uh, uh, presentation. Uh, first, we will talk about an introduction to media and its role in prevention. Then we will, we will uh, understand its uh, influence uh, in, uh, the, uh, in, in the region. 
crafting effective preventive uh, messages, then we will leverage the social media for uh, prevention campaigns. Uh, we will have some case studies, examples from the real life, uh, from Mentor Arabia's experience and also from other organizational uh, experience. And we will end it by a Q&A session. First, we will start by showing like a uh, video to like break the ice and get you into the mode of communication. We will show the video now. This is an awareness test. How many passes does the team in white make? Go! The answer is 13. But did you see the moonwalking bear? So yes, we will get back on this throughout our uh, uh, presentation, but uh, this is very important for uh, all of us to know the uh, distraction that we uh, usually are not aware of while we are bombarded with all of those ads, be it into the prevention or also the regular commercial ads. When we do not look for something by itself, the advertising agencies or also all the campaigns that are addressing uh, consumers or even uh, customers or let's say and the beneficiaries when it comes to prevention campaigning we have to be very careful and very structured and very aware about what are the messages that we want to uh, unleash during our uh, campaigning and i hope that, that during this uh, this webinar we will get to know the differences between the means of uh, uh, of tools and that can be used for prevention first of all uh, we will introduce uh, to to the media and its uh, role in, in in prevention we would like to uh, uh, to address the importance of mass media that employs a frequently synchronized initiative and campaigns that are aiming to hinder the onset of substance use or encourage individuals to quit using particular substance. Media bridges the gap between multi uh, uh, levels and uh, we have to join the efforts towards effective uh, sub substance use. First, why do we use social media? Let's take like a few seconds to think each of us uh why do we use social media on personal level or also on a professional level let's think for a few seconds before giving what why the studies what the studies have shown when it comes to uh, social media use so first why uh organizations uh local national international organization use social media first it's because of it's high reach and lower cost because a good media campaign can reach a mass media audience with minimal expense. The cost per person reach in a ca campaign is often extremely low. Second, the ability to target. A campaign can be timed and broadcasted so that the group most in need of the prevention material, let it be young adolescents, homemakers, etc., can be reached more effectively. Then we have a rapid response. A prevention message can be created rapidly to meet a rapidly developing problem. I cannot wait to start it. So it's something very easy and uh, fast. So uh, if we have like a new drug that is in, in, in the field, in the market, so we can address the community in a fast way about it. 
then we have it's entertaining if it's done proper, properly the media campaign can be entertaining while still conveying the prevention message last it uh, influence opinion leaders so the media can play a crucial role in educating and influencing opinion leaders for example media alone can be effective but when it's combined with other prevention oriented group like schools employers community leaders this is when media based prevention campaigns have their greatest impact the media can be the glue that holds together a multi-level attack on substance use for example it can be used to integrate the effort of teachers community leaders employee employers to create a formidable force against substance use this is where what we can all be engaged together i know that we have a very diversified audience today they can be um, teachers educators social workers decision makers etc so it's combining all the efforts together that is when media based prevention campaigns are most effective then if i i want to elaborate a little bit about cost effectiveness we will see that using media and substance use prevention campaigns need not to be very expensive it can be at a low cost and i will give you example of our own experience at Mantua arabia when it comes to cost effectiveness sometimes it can be a simple posters or a flyer that is put out in public and in places like in schools that can start a useful anti-substance conversation and help in the substance use prevention effort so moving forward we will start by understanding the theories of media influence and in each theory we will be talking about we will be giving an example a real concrete example of and we will be watching a a video but first before watching the video we will talk about the first theory which is it real uh, the reason action or planned behavior here a person's intention to behave in a certain way are shaped into three factors let's really listen to those three factors and think about them in depth our personal attitude toward a certain behavior our perce perception of social norms related to this exact behavior and the belief in their ability to control that behavior now we will watch a video uh, a three minutes uh, uh, video uh, that was done i will not, not now tell about the year that it was done about it's in arabic but it has subtitles so please uh, 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 make sure to check uh, the visuals that was uh, that was uh, used the tone the music and also the text by itself to resonate about this theory so i will ask my colleague to share please the first uh, video ما تفرق معي إذا خسرت أهلي ما بتفرق معي إذا خسرت أصحابي ما تفرق معي إذا خسرت مهنتي ما بتفرق معي إذا خسرت حياتي أنت تفرق معك أنت تفرق معك ساهموا معنا في دعم حملة منتور العربية so. So here, what uh, I, I go back to what I have mentioned in the uh, slides before. I was talking about the uh, importance of using public figures and influencers in when it comes to uh, resonating and mirroring ourselves. So here, uh, for people who are from the Arab region, can know uh, who are those two people in this ad. This ad, we have Samuel Jaber who is a uh, public uh, figure in Saudi Arabia. He's a, a soccer player. He, he played in the uh, World Cup like 30 years ago, and now he's an entrepreneur. So people are, will, will get the message from him in a very like smooth way. And we also had a female figure in this, uh, in this ad, who is an artist, an actress, a young actress, who is saying to people, I don't care about what would happen to me would you care so this uh play on words in arabic will make uh, the uh, generation that we are 
uh, targeting in their own words and their own slang language, if we can say, in their own dialect, will directly resonate. So this is what we were talking about when it comes to personal attitude towards the behavior. And this ad was, was also shown in, uh, on uh, regular uh, media as well. So the second uh, theory is the social norms theory. Here, an individual's behavior is significantly influenced by their perceptions of how others and their social groups behave and think, even if these perceptions are inaccurate. Campaign aligned with this theory often termed normative education. Listen to the term, normative education. Aim to challenge misconceptions about drug use prevalence among adults and also adolescents. These campaigns work to dispel the belief that substance use is widely accepted or tolerated within the community, which we often hear daily and when in our practice, in our sessions and in our programs delivery. According to this model, drug use is seen as a deliberate decision influenced by one's attitude, social norms, and perceived control over their actions. Social marketing campaigns, including those focused on setting or reinforcing social and legal norms, are designated based on these theoretical foundations. So now we will, uh, we will also uh, show another video that resonates around this theory. And somehow, um, a theory is somehow uh, sometimes different from practice and from daily uh, daily uh, used campaigns. Some uh, we can use two, three uh, theories in one campaign. Uh, let's watch this campaign and uh, assess it together. إنها المخدرات القضية الأكثر خطورة التي تطال ملايين الأطفال والشباب العربي والتي تزداد المؤشرات على أن استخدامها بين الفئة العمرية من الخامسة عشر إلى الرابعة والعشرين سنة يرتفع بمعدلات مخيفة وتأتي تجارة المخدرات في المرتبة الثانية عالمياً بعد تجارة الأسلحة وتعتبر المنطقة العربية ممراً لها لذا فإن مواجهة قضية المخدرات ليست بالمهمة السهلة ولكن بالإرادة والمثابرة والعمل الفعال يمكننا الانتصار عليها كما أن استثمار كل دولار في برامج الوقاية له مردود إيجابي يتراوح بين دولارين وعشرين دولاراً لذا نأمل من الجميع مشاركة منتور العربية في تنمية مواردها المالية كي تتمكن مع شركائها من تحقيق رؤيتها لشباب عربي من دون مخدرات إننا نلح على أن نناقش معكم موضوعاً خطيراً جداً موضوع يجب أن يكون على قائمة سياسات الأمن الإنساني في الدول العربية كافة إنه تعاطي المخدرات فمرحباً بكم ضمن أسرة منتور العربية المؤسسة الخيرية التي تأسست عام 2006 كفرع إقليمي لمنتور الدولية وقضيتنا هي حماية الأطفال والشباب من الإدمان عامل الوقت حاسم جدا وليس في صالح شبابنا وأهلهم ومجتمعاتهم إذا علينا معا الإسراع في تنفيذ برامج التثقيف والتوعية التي أثبتت نجاحها لتحصين شبابنا من هذه الآفة المدمرة إن القضية معقدة وتستهدف كل فئات المجتمع لذا نحرص على مخاطبتكم جميعا بدءا بالأهل في منازلهم والأطفال في مراحل تعليمهم الأولى وصولا إلى المراهقين كما لتكنولوجيا الإعلام الجديد الدور الأكثر تأثيرا إذ يتيح تواصلنا معكم لفتح حوار دائم يمكننا من معرفة هواجسكم وتطلعاتكم وعرضها على واضعي السياسات والجهات المعنية 
ومعها يكون أملنا بتحقيق رؤيتنا لشباب عربي من دون مخدرات معا نؤثر معا ننجز معا نفوز منتور العربية ساعدونا لنساعدهم So, uh, I, I, I guess you might be surprised that this video is 10 years plus old. So, and but it's still relevant, it's still usable, and it's still uh, engaging. In what terms? Definitely, 10 years ago, when we used to go to meetings to address the uh, uh, the issue of drug use in the Arab world uh, internationally and how we want to get support for, uh, uh, for the organization and to implement our programs, people maybe had much more time than nowadays. It's, uh, if you can see the difference between the first video shown and this one shown, this is a three minutes. It's only, it can be addressed to like decision makers, to people when we want to get their uh, attention when it comes to the importance of the issue that we are addressing it. It has facts, it has visual, it has numbers, and it's it's very informative when we can, if we can use the word. It's not very entertaining, but it has a certain kind of visual, uh, visual attraction. So still, we should know who is our audience and who is our target when we want to uh, use a campaign to address a certain issue. We cannot use the same campaign to uh, address to uh, uh, social workers, similar to to uh, students, to teachers, and to decision makers. I know this is not easy, and this is a struggle that we face uh, uh, on daily basis. What, who, where, when, why? So this is not an easy process. I'm not saying it's an easy process, but again, it's not an impossible process. We have to uh, to uh, limit the uh, uh, our uh, performance indicators. When I say limit, I mean to know who is our audience, when, how much it will cost me to uh, deliver that what uh, to deliver that message, what are the outputs, what are the objectives. So uh, I can relate to all of uh, our attendees today, and I can understand that we want to have the highest impact, the biggest number reach. Uh, the most important uh, uh, campaign ever, but still these uh, these uh, 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 intentions are really very important. But still, we have to be realistic. We cannot reach we cannot reach everyone at the same time. We have to target and we have to differentiate between the messages that we want to convey. Then we our last uh, theory is the social learning theory. It suggests that personality and behavior are shaped through interactions between one's environment behaviors and psychological processes, also known as observational learning. This theory highlights the importance of observing and imitating other people's behaviors, attitudes, and emotional responses. Social marketing campaigns that showcase Positive role models or promote realistic social norms are grounded in the principle of social learning theory. Let's watch the last video in this category about understanding theories of media influence, and we will discuss it later. Uh, and please put your questions in the question box, and we will answer as much as possible when uh, the uh, session ends. So. Uh, uh, We'll show, we'll uh, uh, watch together the third video.
So, uh, thank you. I have a question related to this direct message. So we will do like an exception and answer it uh, direct away because I, I I would like to stay in the momentum of uh, of engagement. So this video seems to do something wrong. However, it uses fear, appears, and sets a norm that drug use is rising at an alarming rate. This might make the audience believe that drug use is becoming more normal. This is the counterproductive according to the social norm theory. What do you think of that? Thank you very much for this uh, a very interesting question. And definitely what you are saying is very uh, appreciated. So when we say about the whole theories, the three theories that we talked about, the theory of reason, reason action, the theory of social norms, and the theory of social learning theory, I mentioned at the beginning that we can have a combination of the three theories when it comes of one ad. We cannot have like one ad that is like directly addressing one uh, one theory or based on one theory. The last video that we have watched is also a like a, uh, some a coll collaborative uh, uh, efforts with a very minimal cost, uh, regardless of its high production, if we can say, when it comes to like uh, deciding on the cast, on the production setup, on the uh, also advertising, advertising it. Why we use this specific uh, video, and I guess we can show it uh, uh, again uh, later, or you can check it on Mantra Arabia YouTube channel. Prevention. How how much we we listen to when we go and to implement our programs? What do you do? What that what is prevention? How do you address prevention? It's not something that is tangible that I can showcase. It's not as if there are like people who uh, were into uh, a certain disease and got recovered. It's based on long term studies, long term assessment. First, you have to assess their knowledge. Then you have to assess after few months and years their behaviors. So it's based on multiple studies, uh, the, the, the norms that are changed. So we should not, uh, uh, we shouldn't uh, uh, be, a, we shouldn't mistake between the campaign uh, target and the program's target. The campaign target, it's fast. It's about the uh, awareness. It's about the importance of a certain issue that I want to address. People will not change their behavior based on the campaign, but they will be aware about what we are doing. They will be aware about the importance of the issue. It will ring a bell uh, in, in, the, in, the, in their mind. So this is what campaigns do. The campaigns are followed and preceded by multiple sessions, by multiple activities, by a full program that is implemented. So it's not like a standalone activity that will change the world. So this is a very important thing. And it differs from a mission to another. So uh, a, a mission of a relief is different of a mission of development and is, mission, is different of a mission of prevention and awareness. And this specific video, we have seen like children who are getting maybe bullied or children who are getting maybe some fears from different aspects of daily life and they are bombarded. But then there is a prevention window that we cannot see. We cannot see the prevention at the moment, but we can see it later because it, it prevents and it protects those children and other uh, target groups. So we will move to the crafting effective uh, preventing messages. So first, what are, how we have to uh, craft those messages? First, we will be talking about distraction. So one possibility that seems to work well is distraction. So you can say how, if your message is presented under somewhat distracting conditions, your audience will not be able to devote as much attention to countering it. For example, distraction can be built into the message. For example, loud music that interferes somewhat with the audience capacities to do more than the process as the content of the message, but interferes with the cognitively demanding operations of counter argument. This will help induce message acceptance. Almost anything 
and a persuasive communication that makes the message somewhat difficult to process, make it more difficult to counter argue. Ideally, the presentation format is arranged so that the message can be processed, but the individual's capacity to do more than this is diminished. In this way, for example, distraction detracts from a personal ability to counter argue in short term, but long term attitude change because the resultant or the change that I want to do is not based on well learned knowledge. So this is one. Two, the misdirection. So it's very important for us to uh, to uh, grasp those uh, somehow uh, maybe like uh, simple messages, but they are really important. Let's see what studies have found that directing a persuasive anti-substance use message to people other than those we really want to target, make sure, making sure that the real targets are exposed to the message, create a very strong possibility for persuasion. So if we play a message on TV that is anti-substance use, but it is apparently addressed to parents, it will be more persuasive to use than the same message addressed to them directly, to those youth, because youth will not feel as strong a need to defend pro-substance use beliefs, because they say, oh, this is addressed to my parents. So if I want to be like my parents, I should, uh, this role model, uh, the, the adulthood, getting into the adulthood, so I would be benefiting from this message. So this misdi misdirection, is very important. La, uh, again, facts and evidence. We all agree that all our message should be factual, should be based on evidence, should be based on science. And this is what the second video was, that we showed with all the numbers and with all the visuals and with all the studies uh, is, is used. So uh, uh, it's, it's a tactic that ensure that our message is based strongly on facts that have been proven by scientific evidence. It's important to match the emotional context of the ad and the factual nature of the issue, as we can see clearly in this slide. Then, we have to be credible in the message sources. So, because another persuasive feature is the reputation of the message communicator, respected scientists or religious figures or sports heroes or other types of uh, that are involved are highly credible sources for the specific target audience so we should know who our audience listen to let's use those people to address the message people because tend to believe credible resources and do not usually uh, resist their messages. So, if you use a spokesperson in your persuasion message, it's useful to use a person that your your audience knows and respects. It's not only about knowing them. It's important that the speaker is not just popular, but can be viewed as an expert on the topic. Thus, a sports hero, as Mr. Al Jaber that we have mentioned in our first uh, video, who advises use against substance use may be less effective than a less well-known research who is known to be highly knowledgeable about substance use. So we have to be very careful about who we want to integrate. But if we are used a sport hero, it's important that he establish the knowledge. So it's not about getting him go and talk or go give this information. If he is he's to be asked, he has to be knowledgeable. So combining fame, if we can say, combining uh, uh, well-known people with knowledge. We sit with them, we prepare them, we tell them, we send them articles, we send them messages, we, we brief them about the content that they are prevailing. So, we, we are now in the uh, fourth part of our presentation, levering social media for prevention. It's based on the UN ODC, uh, on the UN ODC reference. First, we have to precisely identify our target group of the campaign. 
this means understanding the specific demographics, behaviors, attitudes of the group that we want to reach with our prevention efforts. If we are targeting teenagers, we will tailor a message and strategy that different is different compared to targeting adults or groups that are at a specific high risk of addiction or being exposed to drugs or substance. We have to have a base on a solid theoretical basis, the theories that we have discussed uh, previously, because this will imply our prevention strategy that shouldn't be random, but rooted in established theories and model or behavioral changes. For instance, we can use the health belief model or the social learning theory to guide us into developing an intervention that can be most effective on psychological principles. We have to design messages that are based on strong formative research. Before creating prevention messages, before starting there, it's crucial to conduct a research and to understand the attitudes, the beliefs. It's very hard to change beliefs and motivations of the target. So again, attitudes, beliefs, and motivation, they are different. This includes qualitative research, such as focus groups, surveys, interviews, to gather info, insights that inform the content and tone of our messages. We never uh, take a uh, talking person. We never uh, do a post on social media. We never do a campaign before uh, addressing it with internally with our team, externally with our friends. We, we test it. We see the messages. We do focus a group. We discuss it with experts before, before making it alive, if we can say. We have to strongly connect to other existing drug preventions uh, programs in home, schools, in the community to know what's happening, what are there, uh, how people react, what is already present, not to invent the wheel again. Coordination and collaboration with existing prevention efforts amplify the impact of our campaign. We have to align our messages and strategy with what is already being done and successful in school, communities, families, because we want to ensure a cohesive and reinforce the approach of prevention. And this is, I guess, what ISIP has been doing for the last few years with, with this whole collaborative approach of prevention and awareness, etc. We have to achieve adequate exposure on the target group for an adequate period of time. It's not forever and it's not for everyone again. Consistency and duration are key, as I mentioned. Prevention efforts need to reach the target audience consistently over a sustained period to have a lasting impact. Again, target audience, consistent, sustained period, lasting impact. This is how it goes and this is how it works. This may involve using multiple channels such as social media, educational programs, community events. So campaigning is not about videos, it's a whole process. And maintaining visibility over time to reinforce messaging and behavior change. We will watch uh, the last video, I guess, before uh, concluding with case studies and examples from other than what I personally worked on. So we watch the last video. أحلى بس ما تكون لوحدك بعد ما فقدت بابا وقدرتي على التعبير لمدة طويلة ما حلاها هيك رجعت نقدر نقف على المسرح ونخاطب جمهور كبير رجعت حب حالي كتير كنت مفتكرة تجربة التنمر يلي قطعت فيها رح تخليني اكره حالي العمر كله صار عندي شغل يكفيني انا وعيلتي السنين اللي قضيتها مفكرة انه ظروفي ما رح تخليني اتقدم بحياتي وحقق ذاتي صار ورا ظهري. 
اتحولت من لاجئ لكاتب مشهور اشتريت اول كاميرا صورت اول فيلم بحياتي انا اعطيت فرصة ان اعمل شي بحبه وانجح فيه صرت افهم على ابني اكتر بكتير وصار هو يفهمني علاقتي مع عائلتي واصحابي صارت احلى بطلت خايف من بكرة صار طموحي ما له حدود هي فعلا مصنع امل غيرت لي حياتي غيرت كل شيء حسيت اني مش لوحدي هي عائلتي الكبيره بتنصحني وبتوجهني وبتدعمني تعلمت حب الحياه واستنى بكره So we'll, uh, okay. we'll answer a few questions that are uh, like fast before uh, continuing. So Sam is asking about our social media channels. Definitely, you can follow Mentor Arabia. It's one word on all uh, uh, social media channels, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, etc., X, etc. Uh, and uh, regarding the material, they are all in Arabic and in English. All our material are in both languages. So the videos that you have seen, because they are addressing the Arab population, so uh, we use the Arabic language, but they, are, they all have subtitles. I know maybe it cannot be really very appealing to the international audience, but at least they can be under, uh, understood when you can, uh, when you can watch, them, watch, them, watch them. And depending on the audience that you are presenting it to them, uh, you can use it. Uh, it's it's uh, open source on YouTube uh, on YouTube channel. Uh, regarding the more uh, regarding the presentations, it will be shared afterwards to all attendees by a sub team. And I will keep the more heavy questions uh, till the end. Uh, we move forward with the last part. So this is not something that I worked on. All the previous videos that were shared, except of the first one for sure, uh, were uh, were uh, concrete examples from a campaigns that uh, Mentor Arabia and uh, I personally worked on in terms of uh, content, uh, fact, science, uh, visuals, team, production, uh, then campaigning. So uh, 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 they the end. Some of them were based on a few of the theories that we mentioned, and some of them were combination. So let's see all together what here in, 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 in this uh, uh, campaign that uh, uh, you can check it on stanford.edu, tobacco.stanford. So we love smokers. Oh, so this is something that uh, can be maybe like shocking for the first, uh, for the first uh, side, but this Florida, truth campaign is centered on pointing out the hypocrisy of tobacco companies in selling a product that is known to them to be dangerous to all its users we all know that tobacco is dangerous even their producer but it used the humor and sarcasm both of which appeal to adolescents to sell their anti-smoking message the truth campaign so this is truth campaign was designed to persuade youth that smoking cigarettes was not a form of rebellion, but rather a form of conformity. The campaign showed adolescents how they were being manipulated by tobacco companies. Youth are especially resistant to manipulation by adults. And this campaign used this fact when designing their persuasive substance use preventive message. This campaign was highly successful at the time. So successful, in fact, that the tobacco companies tried unsuccessfully to stifle it. Instead of turning against parents and other authority figures, youth rejected cigarette companies' ads as a result of the campaign. Why? Because the company never used high fear or disgust to scare use from usage, humor and irony. So this is what was used, were the frequent tools. By convincing use that they were being manipulated by the tobacco companies. 
the campaign used the universal adolescent spirit of independence to reject tobacco. So you can see, you can read what it's written. Here, our philosophy on smoker or post-smoker, it's not even about smoking, it's about the tobacco industry, manipulating their products, research and advertising to re secure replacements for the 1,200 customers they lose every day, you know, because they die. So that's why we love smokers. So then here above the influence campaign, the, the above influence campaign also targeted and used reason not scare tactic to convey persuasive information in a logical and thoughtful manner. It has proved to be highly successful with teens and has been incorporated into other community-based prevention. In addition, the company, the, the campaign provided opportunity for adolescents to interact with other adolescents through Facebook and other social networking and incorporated community-based prevention, programming to enhance substance use prevention. Let's look to another successful campaign. So here is the other successful campaign. So in this campaign, people are getting caught by younger brother, setting it on a very good example. So let's look, let's take like a few seconds to read what it's uh, written, then we can discuss it together. So this is the true or false campaign. So it's about the uh the brain about weed about teens uh about what is right about what is wrong about what is true and what is false so a few seconds just to to read it and grasp it so this seems like a child created the ad and in fact, a child did it. The ad itself addresses common childhood issues. Weed isn't so cool when your baby brother finds you high. So this is very important. Getting caught with weed can, can get you kicked off the soccer team, for example, or any other social group. Getting caught by younger brother, setting a bad example, and getting dismissed from an athletic team, a social group, an activity. Neither of these is an earth-shaking event. It's not, but for a youngster, they can be very painful. And so the ad is designed to get them to think about the consequences of substance use. It doesn't tell the audience that they will die from substance use. People probably wouldn't believe that anyway. However, it addresses some important concerns for use and presents the outcomes that they know could happen and that they know they do not want to experience. Threatening youth with illness or death is usually unsuccessful. We all know this. It seems that most youth do not believe they will die. However, telling them that substance use might cause them trouble in their social or family life is both credible and readily acceptable for you. So it's the message that they want, we want to uh, give, give to them. This ad is interesting because it gives some insights into the kind of threats, between brackets if we can use the word, that are likely to succeed when dealing with prevention of substance use by young people. One of the evaluators of this above the influence campaign, it's called Michael Slatter from the Ohio State University, noted the above influence campaign appears to be successful because it taps into the desire by teenagers to be independent and self sufficient. And this is with this sentence I conclude my presentation and my webinar for today. And I'm ready to answer the few questions that I have on, uh, 
on the chat box, but please give me a few time to read them and to uh, understand them. And please feel free to uh, ask uh, uh, more questions. I guess we have like five minutes to end this webinar before ending it. Thank you again, Kirsty and all the team for the opportunity. And I, I hope that it was really uh, uh, beneficial for um, uh, for our audience. So I will uh, I will read the questions and I will answer them. So uh, did you do any effect studies on the videos you've shown us? Uh, so effect studies on the videos, no. But we have uh, we have uh, uh, seen the results of it in school campaigns that we are doing. So we show it in campaigns. And schools, because as I mentioned, it's not one campaign that do or one video that do the change. It's not you show the video. Oh, I want to stop taking drugs, or I don't want to take drugs anymore, or I will. I would like to change the behavior. Again, it's about about changing the perception, getting aware about the. So we cannot do study about the video by itself. We have to do a study about the whole approach of the prevention program so it's part of it so the main the main uh, purpose of the webinar today is to know how to create a campaign what uh, what is the purpose of creating an, a campaign and who want who is to be addressed so when addressing uh, this campaign i hope that i have answered these specific questions rather than talking about a specific example. The example that I've made, uh, that we've made, some are from personal experience, some are from other experiences as well. So again, it's not an easy process. It comes with experience and it comes again with understanding your audience, their beliefs, their, their perceptions and their behaviors. It's not easy, but it's not impossible. So uh, 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 don't uh, don't try to create a campaign before understanding those uh, questions. What's the role of the family in this issue? So uh, I guess it's not a question that I can, in my capacity as communication to answer it, but I can answer it because I have a certain experience from my colleagues in this, in this regards. Uh, all the international organizations and the local organization get references regarding the uh, population that they want to um, address when it comes to prevention. So we have three main components to address the end beneficiaries that are children, youth, or adolescents. Then we have their, their, uh, their teachers or the social workers that work with them, their environment. And then we have the parents. The parents are definitely involved in parenting programs. So when we address a campaign, it can it cannot be addressed at the same time for those three. We will have like a distraction that I have mentioned. We can we, we it can be misled. So and the last one that I've shown the poster or we or the uh, the drawing, if we can if we can say it was addressing teens. So we use they use their uh, the way they they write the way they speak and uh, and it was successful so that campaign had a certain kind of uh, impact at at the time the other one when when i showed the 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 first one that was talking about a a public figure yes the public figure that gave from his personal experience in addition to the scientific content that was given to, to him, the campaign was successful in terms of giving more awareness about not starting any drug uh, or substance. What it, and again, it's prevention. So let me check if there are more questions. I guess uh, some of the questions were already answered throughout my, my presentation. And uh, we come to an end. I'm uh, very happy again with uh, this webinar, and I look forward to uh, to listen to your feedback maybe on our online platforms. And uh, looking forward for the next one with Isab. Be uh, uh, watch all uh, the videos on their social media accounts to know what are the next uh, the next webinars on uh, on the calendar. Thank you again, and have a great.
morning, afternoon, evening, depending on where you are on this uh, world. Thank, thank you, Thank you, yeah, Thank you, everyone. I just wanted to conclude by saying a few words. So yeah, the, um, lots of really positive comments in the chat, which I would say thank you so much. You did a superb presentation there. And uh, thank you for answering all the questions on the hop. So that was great. Um, so yeah, this concludes the webinar. So thank you everybody for joining. Uh, we hope you've learned something today about how media influences behavior and its, its importance in prevention efforts. Uh, you did a sterling job. And uh, we will receive a follow-up email within 24 to 48 hours with a link to view a recording of today's webinar. And uh, yeah, it just closes me to say, so on behalf of ISUP and our presenter Peshawar, uh, thank you very much for joining us today and uh, have a great rest of your day, everybody. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye, everyone. Thank you.